So this last week you were tasked with explaining the effects of the styrofoam when it came to our electroscope in our first video and then we followed that up with the video showing the Pi tin and the styrofoam in the electrophorus lab. So what we'll do here is look at the explanation behind those two and we'll use this um, these drawings uh, to help illustrate what had happened in both of those scenarios. In the electroscope, if you recall, we had a solid piece of metal that is shown here in white that was rigid, could not be moved. At the very tip top, there was a very large disc that went back and forth. Uh, that, that was, you know, the round disc at the top. It was one continuous piece of metal. And then we had a foil wrapped conducting straw with a little pin right there that was able to pivot back and forth. And the first thing we did is we charged up our styrofoam. We made it a big negative charge because that's how styrofoam behaves when it comes to animal fur when they're rubbed past each other. And so we brought in this negative styrofoam here across the top. And what that negative is going to do, it's going to repel any other negatives in the vicinity. If it's an insulator, the negatives will repel just a little bit. If it's a conductor, like our, like our electroscope is, we get a massive amount of repulsion. And so you'll find that this whole scenario here, this whole apparatus was neutral. It still is, and you can go through and count it if you want, but that's not really necessary. You're going to see all these little red negatives down here at the bottom. Those are all the free valence electrons that were throughout the entire thing that had been repelled by this ginormous negative styrofoam repelling all these down here. So if you look at just the bottom half of our electroscope, I have an overall negative half here and an overall negative half here. And what do two negatives do? They're going to repel. At the top, positives can't move, so they're left behind after all the negatives go rushing down to the bottom, which means that I have a net positive and a net positive, and those are going to repel. So in the first example where we see the deflection, what we're having is the top positives repelling each other and the bottom negatives. Two sets of like charges repelling. The second thing I did is I reached in with my finger and I touched the top. I am a large conductor. I am considered the ground. So what I've done here is I've drawn a little grounding symbol. And so in doing that, what did I do? Well, this negative is going to repel any negatives that are in my fingertip, which would be right here, driving them down. Not only that, I had a positive top half attracting negatives off my finger. And so what I've just done is I've added extra red negatives. Same red negatives I had down here. I gained some extras. And what happened? I neutralized this top portion. Down here, I still have an overall negative charge, but up here, I've kind of neutralized. That's what a, a ground does. It neutralizes charged things, in this case, the top half of our electroscope. And if you remember when my finger touched that, I lost some of my deflection. And you can see why, because I don't have as much light charge happening here. When I took my finger and the styrofoam away, we saw it deflect all on its own. Well, this is the same picture here with the ground and the styrofoam gone. So what happened? All those red negatives had bunched up down here, spread back out as much as possible. But there's too many. They're still going to spread out, however, as much as possible, which means I'm going to have an overall negative charge everywhere, the top, the bottom, the middle, everywhere. And what are two negatives going to do? They'll repel. What are two negatives down here going to do? They're going to repel. So this is what we see. We see the deflection because all these negatives are going to be pushing away from each other. Now, what happens when I touch the top with my finger? My finger is still the ground, only this time, instead of giving negatives like I did in that second picture, now I'm going to be taking all these extra negatives away. They're repelling away. My finger gives them more room to spread out. And since I am so much bigger than the electroscope, I give them essentially an infinite amount of space to spread out. And all the extra negatives, every one of them is going to go into me, leaving this neutral, ready to perform the lab a second time. So that was our electroscope lab, which was the first video of the week last week. The next video we had involved the pie tin, the styrofoam, and the rabbit fur. 
And so what we did is we took our rabbit fur and we rubbed it back and forth, back and forth across the styrofoam. And what we know is happening is the negatives are leaving our rabbit fur going onto the styrofoam, leaving the rabbit as a positive charge and the styrofoam as a negative charge. Once we did that once, I could take that rabbit fur, I could basically set it over here. We don't need it anymore. Now I'm left with this negatively charged styrofoam. It's an insulator. We had learned before that an insulator holds whatever charge it has very well. So it's going to hold those negatives, again, very well. So what we did is we then, that was step number one. Step number two was we brought in our pitin. So here is our pitin. And what you'll notice is, is I have four, I'm sorry, two sets of four. I have eight positives drawn throughout the structure of our pitin. That means if it's neutral, which it was at the beginning, I have to have eight negative signs. But because I have this big negative down here, those eight negatives are going to be repelled to the top. Charge is not transferred up into the pitin because that's not how a styrofoam container works. Not only that, if we jump to the very end, you saw the video, I kept on performing this lab again and again and again, and the rabbit fur never came back out. It wasn't needed. If negatives are jumping up onto this pitin every single time I go through a scenario, I should slowly lose these negatives up to the pitin to, to the point where eventually it doesn't work anymore. And that was not happening. You watch that video, it, you know, the, the, the scene with us upstairs doing the, doing the lab, that was one long cut. No, I didn't, I, that was not movie magic. It just kept on going and going and going and going. So step two, we would say that the pi tin has become polarized. It is a conductor, so the polarization is very extreme. So some, some definition vocabulary words there for us. Step number three was bringing our hand in. So if we scroll down, so bringing in the hand, our hand could be basically replaced. Our hand is the ground. So I'm gonna use this one instead. So what did I do? I used the ground. So that's why I got my cheesy little blue grounding symbol there. What is it that your hand is touching at the top of the pi tin? A negative charge. The pi tin itself is neutral, but the top is negative. The bottom is positive because it has become polarized. So when the ground comes in contact with a negative conductor, we're going to share those charges. And those negatives are going to flow into my hand and down into the ground. Now, if I make this truly neutral, I'll have four negative signs left across the top. Now, I might have such a strong negative here that it drives a few extra negatives off into my hand, but eventually I will have this overall positive charge of the pi tin that's left behind, retaining a few of those negatives. So the exact number of negatives that remains is actually kind of irrelevant. All that matters is, is most of them jumped into my hand, some got left behind, so as soon as I take away any number of negatives from this I'm going to end up with an overall positive charge. So this is step three, electric shock. You can't see and you can't feel a difference between charges going into your finger or coming out of your finger. It all looks and feels the same. You just see this flash of light and you feel that little pinprick on your finger. Charges were literally going into you. And while you can make the argument, hey, I just became negatively charged, you are so big and the negatives you gained so minimal that you have pretty much no noticeable effect in your net charge. So we're still going to say that we are neutral. Step four was simply lifting up the pi tin into the air. So if that is what I have right here after the shock, this is what I have. The top is neutral-ish. The bottom is positive, which means the overall charge is positive. By simply lifting this thing into the air, uh, whoops, all right. So by lifting this thing into the air, so if I did this right here, this thing is now in the air those few negatives that we have will spread out a little bit. So maybe this one goes down here and maybe this one shifts over a little bit. So it doesn't matter exactly how we draw them, but it's going to spread out because it's a conductor 
and any charge in a conductor. Too many, too few, or the perfect amount, any charge spreads out evenly throughout our conductor. So now I know every single location, a little, it's overall positive here. It's overall positive, overall positive, etc. So every portion of my pi tin has an overall positive charge. That's how a conductor behaves. And that was step four. Step five was reaching in one last time to touch our pi tin. And so when we reached in one last time to touch the pi tin, the pi tin is overall positive. Our hand represents the ground. This positive is going to attract negatives from our hand. We are both conductors, so we both transfer charge very, very easily. And those negatives go back into the pi tin. I feel it as a shock. I see it as a bolt of lightning, a little flash of light. It doesn't feel any different than what it did the first time. It looks and feels the same. And the charge jumps back into our pi tin. How many charges will jump in there? In this picture, I'm going to have four negatives jump in to neutralize the pi tin. Now, if you are very flinchy and very, very quick, and as soon as you felt a bit of a shock, your hand moved away quick enough, it's possible that you moved your hand away so quick that all four negatives didn't have a chance to jump on here, and maybe only three jumped. If you reach in a second time, you might get, in this lab, you may have gotten a second, very small shock the second time you reached in with your hand. Same thing scrolling up right here. If you reached in once and got a big shock and reached in again and got a little, little tiny shock, you moved your hand away so quickly you didn't allow all the charge to jump in there. So it is possible to get that second little shock for each of those trials. But typically one big shock is all you get. And as you saw in the video, keep touching, touching, touching. You get one, maybe two, but then that's it. Again, if charges were, in fact, flowing up into the negative, uh, into the pi tin, you should be able to leave it sit there, touch it, get a shock, and then more charges would go up. And you'd touch it and get a shock, and more charges would go up. That didn't happen. Once you got one shock, touch, 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 you didn't keep getting repeated shocks. So besides the fact that um, you know the, the knowledge that an insulator behaves in a particular way um, we have further proof that we didn't have um, charge transferring because you had to go through the whole process you couldn't just keep on touching and one thing that I did not do in the video and you can do this if you are doing this at home take this whole setup the whole apparatus set the pie tin down get your shock lift it up get your shock Round two, set it down again, but don't touch the rim. Pick it back up. Touch it. And I can almost guarantee that you will not receive a shock because you did not go through and do any charge removal. This whole thing is charge by induction. Charge by induction. We induced a charge across the top of our pi tin. We touched it with the hand and by using this negative styrofoam, we were able to make this a positively charged pi tin. We had to ground it, and we needed the styrofoam, but that would be charged by induction. Conduction would be if I touched these two things together and they just shared. And that doesn't happen because this is styrofoam. It's not a piece of metal. So hopefully these made sense. The electroscope for part one and the electrophorus lab for part two, the two videos you can watch um, you know, the labs being performed if you weren't able to do those yourself. So if you, um, if you need to go back and revise any of your Google Form answers, feel free to do that, absolutely. So until next time, we will um, we'll see you then. Take care.